Hi guys! I was repotting a burrow's tail and about halfway through I thought, you know what? I should just do a quick video on this because I see a lot of people commenting about repotting burrow's tail and how incredibly frustrating it is because if you even bump these guys like slightly, they just like shoot off leaves like like it's a fireworks, you know, display or something. It feels like anyways, it feels like you'd almost have to do nothing to these. So I thought I would give you my tips and tricks for repotting these guys, even though I'm already about half done here. The first tip is you need to let your plant get extremely, extremely dehydrated before you repot. And that's hard to do, but I'm gonna pick this up here and show you guys what I'm talking about. If you can see, see how, how shriveled and just, I mean, the ends are still really pretty, but the top for sure is really, really shriveled. When these guys are dehydrated, they are less likely to fall off. Much, much less likely, in fact, to fall off. So, um, the first thing I do is let them, if I know I need to repot, is um, let them get very, very dehydrated. Now the second thing, which is probably a little funny looking, but it works really, really well. Um, it was an idea I had a while back and I thought, you know what, I bet that's gonna work and it has worked great for me. And that is using skewers. These are just shish kebab sticks. You can use any kind of small um, dowel and you just um, let your plant get really, really dehydrated and then jam. I, I had about five of these in this originally. And then you just pick your whole plant up, which you can see I could pick this whole thing back up out of here, but I don't want to because I just got all these draped around nicely. And if I pulled it back up, it would be hard. So then you can just grab a hold of these if, if it's really dehydrated and your soil is really compact. Usually with these guys, you're not repotting until they're fairly full. So the roots usually have gone around and made a nice little compact um, root ball. If you're repotting before there's a really compact root ball, then you probably have a bit of a smaller plant and this might not be as great of a technique. But for larger plants, uh, which this is just a medium, you know, a medium size one, not a very big one, but um, this works great. Um, the bigger the plant, the bigger your dowel will need to be, obviously, but then you can just pick them up. And I'm going to scoot this, well, I'm going to move this over just a little bit. I have another one here, just a really small one. This was a few cuttings um, that I had, I don't even know where they came from, but they weren't obviously in the same basket as this. And I thought, well, whenever I repot this guy, I will add these guys into it and just have a combination thing. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna break these guys up and just kind of wedge them in. So I'll show you, this is the exact same process that I used um, to get this guy out, even though I'm sorry I did it without um, doing the video yet. So I'm just gonna steal one more of these so that I have three for this guy. I'm gonna poke one more in here. And either um, you can kind of turn it on its side, but I like to just pull on them and see if the entire thing will come out before you turn it on its side, and yes it will for me. So basically this is just how big the roots were. See a lot of dirt is left, but that's all right. I got a hold of this here. And so with this whole big one, the whole thing just came out just like this. And then I just carefully set it into a larger size pot. Now with this guy, I'm gonna separate these and put ones and twos. So I'm just gonna take the dowels out and separate these guys. But um, this method of using some kind of skewers works really well for any kind of um, a draping hanging pot that you need to repot as long as it has a fairly um, established root cluster. It doesn't have to be something hanging like this as far as hanging down on the pot, just, you know, hanging pots. It's it's a pretty, a pretty great size to do this with. Um, and for these kind of plants that are break off really easy that you practically can't touch without ruining them, this is, this is the go-to for me, I'm telling you. All right. This may get a little boring. I, I move really slow with these guys. So I'm just gonna make a little mess here and separate. This um, potted cluster here has, and I'm setting down this part of this cluster off camera here, sorry. But um, this side is a lot less full than this other side because this one has the main light most of the time because it was hanging in a window. And I do rotate it, but this side just never quite grew as full as this side. So I'm adding these extras in over here on this side that's a little bit sparse just before I fill all of the soil in. And um, 
I'm just tucking them down in there, laying these back over the top. And again, I let these, the smaller pot get very dehydrated as well. I've lost about, repotting this, I've lost about six to eight leaves so far. And if you've ever repotted one of these, that's, that's really, really great because that's um, not very many for these guys. Okay, I think I will arrange these in and come back so that this isn't exceptionally boring. And um, there's not really much else exciting that I'm gonna show. I just fill in the pot, re-put the hangers on. Um, I'll show you really quick the easiest way that I like to get the hangers off with a plant like this um, that, that you're trying not to bump. And once I get these rearranged, I'll be back in just a second. Alrighty, I have got these guys placed in and have added a little bit of soil around. Um, the way I add soil is a combination of finding where the uh, biggest natural opening is and just I shoved my soil back out of the way. Um, just adding it in, like here's, you know, here's an easy space right here. And add, adding just tapping soil in and then taking one of the skewers or another stick and just stuffing it in along the holes. And then after I do that and get some of the main, you know, the bulk of the dirt filled in, then I gently go back and I don't necessarily lift up every branch, but I don't like adding soil on top um, because it's really hard to get it all back down through without breaking a, a bunch of leaves. And yet usually you need, you know, a fair amount of soil through here. So I like to just prop it up. I have mine propped up on a gallon pot. Um, some of the longer ones, you know, it, it takes a larger, um, <laughs> a larger thing to prop them up on so that you're not breaking off any leaves um, against the ground where they're touching, but then I like to just really gently lift and pack the soil down inside. And then with my fingers, I add a little bit more and then just work it up around the bottom of the stems to just help fill in all, all up in here. So just, and the, again, the, the sticks can be really helpful to get in between the stems and just because a lot of times the leaves die back right at the base a little bit, which is just normal for any succulent. And so you kind of want to add a little bit more soil around those bare stems. And also in pots like this, of course, the soil settles. So the soil all around the top settles um, a fair amount as well. So anyways, I just go around the edges like that and just pack it in, you know, around the edge where it's um, needing packing and then slowly work it up through um, give it a little massage kind of and work the work the soil up underneath um, the leaves here to give it a really good thing um, really good coat and layer of dirt over everything a new layer of dirt I should say over everything and then of course I take any of the little leaves sorry my sun keeps moving here it get clouds and then sun and then clouds um, any leaves that are left and these guys look shriveled but three of them have little babies starting already on them so any little babies that are left I will sprinkle on the top of the soil after I'm got it all where I want it um, and I think that I won't show you all of that today so that it won't get super long let's see here but I do want to show this this is um, the kind of hanger that it was in the type of hanger that this pot had. So when I go to um, take the hanger off, I use a butter knife and I'll, I'll show you how it works here and then I'll show you what I do with the burrow's tail that's slightly different. So with a butter knife, oops, I'm out of camera. Sorry, I was trying to move these so that we could see good. All right, so here you can just slide a knife. It doesn't have to be a butter knife. It can be a sharp knife um, in between the pot and this hook here. And then you just kind of twist just a little bit and it pulls it out and then you can pull down the, and then just back up. The, the knife itself will hook. You can see here, the knife just hooks on this ledge when you slide it in and then you can just pop it up. And um, it works really well. Now for the burrow's tail, 
because of all of the hanging down stuff again sometimes um, say say your hook was right underneath this branch which happens a lot the branch is just going right over the top of it sometimes you need to get back a little bit from the hook and slide the knife under a few branches like this and then you know if your hook was here then you could slide it under and pop it out that way so if I didn't, if we're pretending this is Burrow's tail and I didn't move all of these, I might slide it under these branches right here in order to get to this to pop it off. And once I get in that, it's really, it's really easy to just pop off, which I don't want to do it again because I'll just have to rehook this one. But um, that's how I do it is with a butter knife with these guys. Um, it's been the easiest for me to get the hook, the hooks off of the pot that you're trying to remove it from. And then when you go to put the hooks back on, that's easy enough. Obviously they just clip on. So, um, I think that's it for today. Um, this was, yeah, unexpected. I definitely wasn't planning on doing a video, but I got just part of the way through, like I said, and thought, you know what, this might actually really help someone. Cause I do hear a lot of people lamenting about how difficult these guys are to repot. And the skewers for me are just amazing. So to recap, first off, make sure that you let your plant get dehydrated before you repot it so that the leaves aren't as likely to fall off because if the leaves are fat and full of water, they're much much likelier to fall off when bumped and then second use small dowels or skewers and just stab them in in multiple locations four or five so that you can just grab the whole thing usually with both hands depending on how big the cluster is and just lift it out of the pot that way and it works like a charm for me um, and you can even do it on other pots where you're not really concerned about the plant um, uh, the leaves falling off per se. Some plants that just have the pretty powdery white coating and you don't want to touch them or things like that. The skewers can make a great little tool um, for that too. Just stab them in and you know and, and transport without having to touch and and possibly ruin some of your really pretty uh, pretty looking leaves. All right that's it for today. I hope you're all doing well. I will talk to you soon and happy growing.